think this all, the story all starts with you, doesn't it? Tell us what you, what was the inspiration. Uh, well, I, I tweeted it. I, I have a pile of scripts at any given time that I'm kind of working with, um, and I, I had this this vague treatment called Power Tool Cheerleaders versus the Boy Band of the Screeching Dead, and I will say the full title every time. Um, and I basically thought, yeah, that's never going to work. And I tweeted, okay, I'm scrapping Power Tool Cheerleaders versus the Boy Band of the Screeching Dead. Told you. Um, and then I got a reply from our incredible lead and producer Charlie Bond. Just straight away went, nope, we're making that. And that's what happened. She started tweeting at people that day saying if we can pull this project together might you potentially be involved uh, and that's how it came about so so I it, it, it was pulled off my in development pile by Charlie really and her force of will took us right the way through and, and made it into a movie so just an incredible experience really so as well and can you tell us a little bit about the premises for the people that haven't watched it yet yeah um, it takes place on a kind of low rent TV talent show uh, we have a slightly dysfunctional cheerleader act we have a very overconfident boy band act and then somewhere along the line the the cheerleaders kind of end up cursing the boys a bit so it all gets a bit unpleasant and there's some some sort of power tooly eye gougy and songs so 12 songs eye gouging power tools as long as you're into those specific things you're gonna have a riot so. you don't normally associate uh, associate sorry horror with musicals so is it was it nice for you to play those genres against each other? Uh, it, I loved that. Um, we, I'd previously made a, a, a fake documentary about the music business that had a bunch of songs in it. So I'd kind of worked with our composer Phil Sheldon, I'd previously worked with him where I'd done these horrible crappy demos because I have very little musical ability. I'm really just, I'm winging it like you wouldn't believe. And then, But then I present them to him and he suddenly turns them into amazing music because he's this kind of multi-musical instrument genius. And then when you throw our musical director James Hamer Morton into the mix as well, you know, we end up with what starts as these scrappy little demos end up being blockbuster songs so uh, yeah it's been an incredible incredible riot of a thing um, yeah. and, and, and for you you know is it because it's kind of based around this kind of um, I'm trying to think what you know the reality TV stars in, in some respects is there a social commentary that you wanted in this? It, it's packed it's packed with social commentary but it wasn't my priority. <laughs> no, there's a little bit that happens accidentally. I'm not going to shut it down because nothing gives me greater joy than reading a review that goes, this is actually a commentary about, you know, whether it's labour conditions or whatever. And I go, yes, it is. You know, I'm, I don't want to shut that down. So if you've interpreted it that way, that's the way it is. Um, but, and it's all deliberate because that's just how layered my writing is. We are absolutely exhilarated, so excited to be here at Fright Fest. It is boiling hot, the weather outside is mad, the air con in the cinema is on and we are so excited to be in there. <laughs> and you've made a horror film. I know, how did that happen? We started with this stupid idea from Pat's brain on a tweet and suddenly, well I say suddenly, three years later, it's a musical comedy horror that's playing at Fright Fest. What a ridiculous honour. You know, we've been coming to Fright Fest for years and suddenly to have one of our films here is just, it's mind-blowing really. Absolutely. And, you know, I was talking to Pat earlier on about the, um, the kind of social commentary of the film, obviously it's being, you're dealing with reality TV stars. Was that something kind of in the subtext, apart from what, that you kind of attracted you really? Oh, 100%. I mean, the idea of, of us being, I mean, we're all actors, obviously, you know, and, and we, we see these, these reality TV stars that go on and we see this kind of alternate entertainment. And, and these are the celebrities, these are the people that are applauded. And so we obviously, I mean, as actors, we, we see this and we think, you know, well, why aren't people, you know, watching, you know, amazing dramas on screen? I mean, they are obviously, but why is this our entertainment? And suddenly to step into that role and play those, those TV talent stars, suddenly you realize, you feel an Enigmatic. You realise the competition. You realise how urgent it is and what people are invested in, which is who's going to win the big competition. And how many neuroses you end up with. <laughs> and you've got a couple of that with action. Um, how, how was that? What, what was the choreography like? Of, you know, to, to play in those so the, I've always loved fight choreography stuff. And so any of any action, even though it takes longer to shoot, is, is the most fun to me. But because we've got a musical, Obviously, we've got all that kind of choreography stuff going on. And then you've got to do it in time with a song, and you've got to make sure that that resets every time. It, it takes so much longer. And, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. Or not. Let's find out whether people like it. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, as you said, it's a musical as well. Was that something also that attracted you both? Because you're, you know... Horror is seen in, in one particular you know, genre, so you, you see the frightening and whatever. You don't associate music 
to a horror necessarily. So was that something that attracted you as well? I mean, so I am a big fan of other like horror affiliated musicals. You know, you've got your Anna in the Apocalypse, you've got the uh, Little Shop of Horrors, and you've got like that Buffy episode. Uh, I, I absolutely adore stuff like that. So to have that chance to be involved with something like that, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm down, I'm down. I just wanted to be able to use auto-tune on myself and make people think I could sing. Well, it all starts with the story. What attracted you to the story? Yeah, I mean, um, so basically, as I was saying, I'm like, uh, so we had a script read, uh, COVID times, and it was just so much fun. Like, everyone was literally sitting around on a table. Well, we weren't really, because we were on the video screens, um, on Skype or whatever it was. And um, yeah, we were just like laughing at Pat Higgins' brilliant work. And um, it was just so much fun to be a part of. And then they gave me the part, and then they even gave me more lines, which is even better because it's like oh, what did I do <laughs> so that's brilliant so um, yeah so I really enjoyed it <laughs> and, and uh, the, the crux of the story can you tell us a little bit more about it because it sounds bonkers from the top. it is definitely bonkers and that's why I also like it <laughs> um, the story I mean it's it's essentially about a talent show and two rival um, teams in a talent show one's a boy band one's a uh, power to, uh, cheerleaders at that time and um, yeah something happens a bit magical and it all changes <laughs> and it all gets a bit mad and gory and a lot of fun and a lot of randomness and but it's beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful randomness so um yeah it's brilliant to be a part i don't want to tell too much away because i know everyone hasn't seen it yet so, yeah. and i imagine as well it's a huge ensemble so all of you kind of working in the trenches together that's the beauty of the independent film industry 100%. yeah and you get to know people so well as well like and like especially like even with things like because we sing a lot in this and i think that's one thing that maybe people don't know until after like, oh my god they sang quite a lot and um that was brilliant as well like everybody helping each other as well with certain notes because not everyone's a singer as such but everyone was really like helpful with each other and like it was just such a beautiful environment to be in man i wish you guys were there like you have seen it you see what i'm talking about but it was so much fun so yeah with regards to the singing was that done as something as an adr or was that you know i remember sort of going back to um what was it, Lay Miz, you know, with Hugh Jackman, yeah. and it was all sang live and right. whatever. Did, was that something that you did, or was it all something that you did? So we we were all given the songs beforehand. We all practiced and rehearsed <laughs> so much beforehand, and then um, so we were kind of comfortable doing it in front of camera. But then definitely, I'm sure that we had to record after as well, just for bits and stuff where people peaked or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I really hope that everyone enjoys it, and I really want it to be a soundtrack because that would be absolutely brilliant. Like seriously. Oh my gosh, that'd be incredible. And I actually hear my voice, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it is an exciting night tonight. Tell us all about the film. Oh, well, <laughs> it's cheerleaders, power tools, zombies, jazz hands. Like, what more do you want from a film? I imagine then, with that title, um, you get to work with some very nifty uh, power tools. I didn't get to work with any power tools. So, I was almost going to be one of the cheerleaders and then they gave me the role as like the baddie. <laughs> so without having seen it, um, yeah, I got no power tools. Well, I me. had nothing to defend myself with in this film. Only your talent. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us what attracted you to this film. So Pat is just bloody incredible as a writer and as a person. Um, so when I found out he was writing another movie, doing another movie, and then he got Charlie Bond on to produce, I was like, I wasn't going to ever say no. Um, but yeah, originally she was talking to me on like early days of the script of like, you could be on check early do you want to do this? And I was like, maybe, like, you know, I'm ha I want to do it, whatever it is, I'll say yes. And then, they, yeah, so it just changed. So I was going to say yes from day one with them involved. Everybody says as, a, as an actor, it's much more fun to play the baddie. So tell us, was that the case? I always like it, and I'm not actually evil, but I am I think I prefer playing strong characters, whether they're like strong as just in feisty or strong as an evil. It's just, maybe it's easier, I don't know. I don't like playing like the weak, and I, there's nothing wrong with those characters. I just don't think I do it well, so I like to kind of stick within my comfort zone. And people keep now asking me to do it, because I've done it once and twice, and you know, however many times. So. You've been typecast. Yeah, I don't, it's fine, it's fine. I get booked, so it's fine. And, and, and uh, being part of the kind of whole independent film movement, you know, what's the beauty of that really, as opposed to maybe the bigger budget stuff? Is there a, 
like a family unit. It's such a family. It's like everybody you work with has worked with somebody else, that you, and then it's like it becomes a kind of word of mouth and you get booked because you've worked with them and they've worked with them and then you go onto another set and you're like oh hi how are you like you know from the last set and it, i think you know obviously it's amazing to make big budget movies but with the independent film industry it's like people are really there because they want to be doing it they're there because they have this passion for independent horror and they just love horror and then it's nice to be around that because that's what you want to do